My name is Ashley Winch and I'm the Executive Director of Marshfield Area United Way. And today I am here visiting with one of our partner programs, Marshfield Area Respite Care Center. Um, I am joined by Marilyn Seidel Kramer, the Executive Director, and Sue Jansen, who is the Program Director of the Program uh, Manager. Right? Yeah. Program yeah. Manager. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, Marilyn, would you like to share a little bit about what Marshfield Area Respite Care Center is and how they came to be? And sure, um, I've been with the Marshfield Area Respite Care Center since inse its inception in the city of Marshfield. About 25 years ago, there was a group of people working with seniors that decided that Marshfield, um, the community of Marshfield needed to have some sort of a day system in place that people could have their loved ones attend during the day while they did errands and um, worked or whatever it was that they needed to do. And so there was a group of people, Dr. Susan Mickle was one of the physicians that was uh, on that beginning stage uh, and there was Leon Franzi who was paramount in the in forming this agency and there were a lot of people with the Department of Social Services and the Division on Aging and it just went on and on and on because when I was uh, interviewed for my for my job there was about 14 people at that interview which is really a lot of people you know so it's quite intimidating at the time but they felt that uh, they wanted to have someone that was from the community and had sensitivity to older people um, that people would be more, that, that they would feel welcomed to come because it was relatively new in the community. And at that time, being of our, our, our homogenous area that we are in, that people felt that they should take care of their own individuals. So it was like very difficult in the beginning. But the Wesley United Methodist Church uh, took us under their, under their wing and they gave us space. And I believe we started at two days a week and then we have progressed now to five days per week. Um, the Brookdale Foundation is where our original grant money came in, and they're in uh, New Jersey, Teaneck, New Jersey, and we are still affiliated with them. Every two years I fly to wherever they set up a conference, and I am actually at this time the longest uh, director with that agency. Uh, that started and there were like 300, there's like 347 of these agencies throughout the United States. So it actually is something to be very proud of. Absolutely. And we were nominated last year for um, some funding. We did not receive that funding because there were very many competitive other daycare systems, but I thought it was nice that we would be even considered um, to be in that running, so. And Sue, I'm, I'm holding a fly swatter in my hand. <laughs> You're the program manager. Um, maybe you want to talk a little bit about some of the programming that you do at Respite Care Center, and it sounds like maybe we're going to have an example. Yes, yes. <laughs> so two of the most popular programming at the Respite Care Center are um, we have exercises every Monday. Um, Marsha Lindo, um, who's an exercise instructor at YMCA and the Second Street Community Center, she comes in and does chair exercises for an hour. Um, and then we've incorporated other physical activities um, throughout the years for programming. One of the most popular has been balloon ball. And then we've also added a fly swatter feature. And you know, it always helps to have some very uh, rousing polka music in the background. <laughs> People get pretty excited. I'm sorry we don't have any polka music here. We'll have to maybe add that in. But yes, um, that's part of it. Um, the other thing, we this can kind of, exemplify for music and for exercise programming is um, we'll roll the dice and one of the numbers will come up and say they roll number one and it's okay everybody clap and then we'll go through all the root the numbers <clears throat> excuse me and then so everybody's gone through all the exercises so um, and uh, music programming um, she also does that with the dice yeah. and people can pick the genre of the song yeah music Very therapy popular. I've been able to attend on yes. course occasions yeah. and it is just a wonderful activity that everybody enjoys and has so much fun yeah. and there's dancing and yeah. playing instruments and it's just a really really neat thing and I think that's probably something they you have increased doing mm -hmm. because everybody enjoys so much yes correct, correct. Yes. yes yes so I don't know if you want to do a little uh, All balloon right. ball Let's here Yes, oh my gosh, I yes, guess so. <laughs> I have like... I don't even know if there's rules. Is there rules? There no. are no rules at rest, but... <laughs> no, no. So here you go. So now imagine like 10 or 12 people doing this with the rousing polka music. So yeah. it's pretty fun. You know what I mean? So, so yeah. 
Yeah. But it all it, it it provides color. It provides uh, physical exercise. Yeah. It provides like socialization. There's so many aspects to everything that you do. Where you know a lot of times people don't understand that when you're running a social organization, what you're trying to do is engage people. If they're at home and they're they're sitting and they're just sitting, you know they're not engaged, even though they love the person they're with. But when they come to the respite care center to have those individuals engage in some activity and feel some fulfillment. I mean, you know, like to hit that ball and hit it at somebody, that's kind of fun. You know, <laughs> it doesn't matter how old you are, you still like to participate. And I really think participation and socialization and love and care are really the primary reasons that we have been so successful. Absolutely. So that's what I was mm -hmm. going to mention. So you definitely have lots of fun around there, but when Absolutely. I'm there, I think I cry almost every <laughs> single time because it touches my heart so much. Yeah. Um, and that is because of the love and support that you give every single participant yeah. individually. And it is just a beautiful thing. I'm, yeah. I know the program was intended to help out the caregiver, and it mm -hmm. does, uh -huh. but um, the other side of it just um, is something that yeah. uh, I think is just so cherished for those families. So um, just thank you for what thank you're you. doing for our community and thank the families you. here. So um, what are your hours of operation currently and where are you going to be located because you're getting a new home? Well, I'm going to talk about this for just a second because sure. first of all, we had some tragedy on September 2nd of 19. Or 2018, when the Wesley United Methodist Church burnt to the ground and our respite care center was located in it, it relocated in one day over to the Faith Lutheran Church. We are about to re relocate back to our original site, only this time the Wesley United Methodist Church has built us in specifically for the daycare. So we have our own private area that um, is actually on one floor, which is a lot easier when you're working with people that have mobility, memory, all the issues to have to get around. It's right there. The, the caregivers can now drop off right at our door. So actually overall, this is all just so exciting to have happen. Um, for us personally, I've waited a long time. I started in one tiny room at the Wesley United Methodist Church with a very small grant of money. And we have grown into somewhat a, of a uh, valuable business. We are a valuable business to the community of Marshfield and we continuously grow and prosper. And that's significant to me um, when you're running something that when you started it was probably just not as accepted as it could be. So for me personally as a career and as a community member I just feel so much accomplishment. I'm so proud that we are able to return to our, our home and uh, open up on the June 23rd. Well, and I think it just goes to show that there is good that can come from tragic Absolutely. situations and you'll yeah. finally have a home that is solely intended for your purpose and, exactly um, for your program and I think that that's a wonderful thing so, but, so you can just give out the hours and what's okay. all happening sure we're open Monday through Friday um, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Um, uh, as I said uh, Monday there's all there's always an exercise programming between 11 and noon uh, Friday um, at 10 30 to 11 30 Carol Ann Franke from music therapy specialist out of Mosigny comes um, and does an hour of music therapy. Um, so we have a great time. And I, I, I want to emphasize about music therapy for people with memory impairment. Mm -hmm. There has been research done that shows that the part of the brain that is responsible for rhythm and music seems to be preserved despite memory impairment. So we have folks that will have absolutely the rhythm no matter yep. what. You know, they're, they've got the beat, they're on their lap, you know, and nobody's asking them to do that, you know. They may not talk that much, but boy, oh boy, if their favorite song comes on, um, we have one gal in particular, Show Me the Way to Go mm -hmm. Home, knows all the words, doesn't need a song sheet. Yeah. So um, anybody that comes and observes that, it's pretty incredible, mm -hmm. music therapy benefits. It really is. And I know that you guys are getting ready to reopen in your brand new facility and you've been closed for some time. Um, and I'm sure you've been keeping in contact with your families and how are they doing during this certain, certainly uncertain time? Well, we've, we've provided the families with uh, what we call busy bags or mailings. 
throughout once a week we would mail out activities within uh, that first of all they would get mail mm -hmm. then there was pictures of us so they wouldn't forget who we were and our next one is going to be us with masks on because of the uh, when we re-enter or when we reopen we're going to have to the staff will wear masks the participants are not required to wear them unless their family members want them to wear them but we want them to see us with the masks on so they can see us like because you know they rely on this uh, for all their their cues and so if you cover up a lot of that you know what I'm saying you have to like break them into that slowly although I feel we have um, good rapport with these individuals and we've been um, to a couple of the homes and stuff and and uh, waved from the street and stuff so we'll probably we'll do another little round before we come back together but I do think that they um, you know they say that people can't learn new things uh, once they've been diagnosed with Alzheimer's, but I, I, I kind of disagree with that to a point. And it's my understanding that we have some guests here today. We do. Uh, Linda and Lorraine, and we're going to get the opportunity to meet and talk with them. Right, and Donna. And Donna. Yes. I am now joined by Donna, Lorraine, and Linda, and they have been gracious enough to share their story of how they came to become uh, participants of the Marshfield Area Respite Care Center. Donna, do you just kind of want to give a little backstory of how you got involved with Respite Care Center and what it's meant to your family? Sure. Um, my mom, Lorraine, she was diagnosed with Alzheimer's uh, when she was 75, so she's had it over 12 years already. And it was kind of a slow process in the beginning, and I kind of worked third shift, so I kind of overlooked everything during the day, and she was doing really good. Until well, the last four or five years, you could tell she was kind of slacking off and going down a little bit and we're kind of concerned and looking for different outlets she loves the volunteers she's a worker worker <laughs> helped at the eagles club and did weddings and bingos and volunteered at the hospital i mean and busy casey hall everywhere I mean, busy girl yeah so busy she, busy girl <laughs> she was busy so she always volunteered at the hospital in a couple of days a week and then we kind of let her go and it was hard on her to let her go but then we just told her that you know, it's time for the younger kids to step up. It's time for you to kick back and retire a little bit. So I tried to look for something else because I was concerned about her wandering around the streets and stuff and not staying in the house. So then my friend told me about the respite center actually and went over there and she loved it. Marilyn and Sue are great. Wanted me, you can leave her, you can go, okay. <laughs> it's like, so I checked it out and she started out two days a week and then actually did get on one of the scholarship programs and stuff. And then we kind of had to have a family meeting because it started getting a little worse where she wandered and you know I could only do so much during the day I worked third shift and then Marilyn Sue were great they'd even pick her up and drop her off and everything the, the mm -hmm. ex Uber yeah, they're, yes. yeah <laughs> they're excellent over there so so it got to the point we needed a family meeting to discuss with my moms that you know I was really worried something had to be done so we had a family meeting and my sister Linda graciously volunteered and quit her job and lived in Appleton and moved up here to move in with my mom, which was a godsend. <laughs> Almost three years ago, yeah. I moved to Marshville to be with my mom so that she could stay in her home. Um, at that time, she was going to the Marshfield Area Respite Center two days a week. And then once I moved in, we uh, she started going five days a week. And what does respite mean to you as a caregiver? Oh, it's a godsend. <laughs> it's a godsend. Um, it gives me a break that I need uh, to do what I need to do. You know, I have pets, I have to take them to the vet, I have to go to doctor appointments, um, you know, errands, grocery shopping, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and just to have a break, you know. And it's, my mom absolutely loves the center. She's very social. Um, and so it really helped her to be in that social setting and to interact and now with the COVID, I have noticed a decline mentally and physically since she's been at home, you know, and so I can totally see what this center has done for her and her well-being and her quality of life. And I can't thank Sue and Marilyn enough. That's a wonderful program. I agree. Lorraine, are you excited to be able to go back soon? Get to go back to work? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I tell her she's going to work. Sign you up, right? I'm a worker. Yeah. yeah. 
Well, thank you so much. Is there anything else you'd like to share with everybody about uh, respite or your experience or? Um... I would just like to add that the uh, scholarship program is wonderful because um, there was a point where she needed the scholarship before she could get um, into the Medicaid system. So uh, these fundraisers and everything that they do so that people in the community can get a scholarship to attend this facility is fantastic. So, and we've, you know, benefited from it personally. All right. Well, I know uh, Marilyn and Sue are so thankful for you sharing your story and um, pro love their individuals just like their family. So. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you for joining right. us, and um, I look forward to seeing Lorraine when I visit the Respite Care Center. <laughs> Smile, well, you'll be in important. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. Like I mentioned at the beginning, one of the reasons that we're here today is to discuss um, Respite Care Center's upcoming garden tour, and uh, Jill Myers is here, and she will be showcasing her garden during the event. So, Jill, could you just give us a little perspective of um, what people can see and what they can experience within your home? Sure. Um, part of my garden is my husband's um, passion for railroad memorabilia, and he has a railroad um, station in our yard that people can tour. Um, I have hundreds of hostas because I have a lot of shade um, that um, goes through a woods along the river or a little creek. Um, also, we installed from, I was on the garden tour six years ago, and we have installed a water feature to our garden um, with the recommendation of another person that was on the garden tour probably about three, four years ago. Um, we were looking to see who was on the garden tour, my husband and I, and seeing that someone had a pond feature, and I said, well, we should go and take a look and ask questions. And so we went um, to, it was from Rum's funeral home. Sure. Um, the gen Jenkins? Tammy, think. Tammy Jenkins? Tammy and Greg Jenkins. No, uh, he retired. But anyways, oh, Don Persons. Don Persons. Persons. Okay. Yes, they were on yep. the garden tour, yep. and um, Mark had a lot of questions for him about his water feature. So we installed a stamped patio, a water feature um, that incorporates uh, what my husband does for a living uh, with old an old caterpillar in a bucket from an excavator um, and a fire pit. Uh, that we used a cone crusher from a um, quarry. Sounds wonderful. Yeah, we had quite a bit that we <laughs> added in the last six years since we were on the tour. So this is your second time then being on part of the tour. And what inspired you to get involved with the garden tour originally? Um, because I spent so much time in my garden, I felt it beneficial that other people could come and enjoy it and hopefully they enjoy it as much as I enjoy it and for such a wonderful cause too. So thank mm -hmm. you for being a part of it. Um, Sue, maybe you can just give some information about some of the other gardens that people will be seeing and maybe the date and time that um, this will be all taking place. Sure, and I also have to uh, commend Jill because she recruited one of the other <laughs> gardens. Yes. <laughs> yeah, she recruited Rick Scheuer, who is mm -hmm. not too far from their house, and they both have large yards. They both have yards about two acres. Mm -hmm. um, so we're very thankful for that, and the last time, Jill was in the tour. She also recruited another gardener, and I think that was Irene. Oh, yes. And I think no. you were out shoveling, were you shoveling rock at that garden? <laughs> so she kind of goes over and above yeah. the call of a, of a gardener yeah. participant. So we really thank her for that. I have so. two less friends now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> So anyway, so we appreciate because yeah. um, the gardeners, we can call them and say, hey, who do you recommend? Yeah. Um, but it is Sunday, July 26th. Um, we postponed it with everything that was going on. It's 1 to 4.30. Um, we also have uh, Jill Myers, Rick Scheuer, Alex, and Brenda Tilson. Um, they're on Arlington. And we have Kathleen Rilke and Brian Ebert. Um, and they are in the division up from the clinic, pheasant run? Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. That sounds, that sounds right. Okay. 
Yeah, yeah. Excellent. Anything else you want to share about the garden tour? Also at Jill's, we will have the uh, tea to go this year. Normally we would have volunteers that would bake homemade goodies. Um, this year we will have um, beverages and tea mm -hmm. to go um, at her site and also the raffle will also be there. Um, so we have behind you and then you can kind of see, um, but on our raffle we'll have some flower baskets and some other nice items for folks to bid on. So. Sounds like a lovely time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I guess what I'd like to add is that this year has been a little bit a different of a year and not so participatory as it has been in the past for all events. And when this opportunity arise to maybe postpone and then still create a venue where people could socially distance, enjoy the outdoors, stay within their own uh, private groups that they come with and with a few volunteers, I believe all this could be managed, that that was what the deciding factor was to try and go ahead and have the garden tour this year. It is one of our only fundraisers that we do have, so all the money that we do raise at the, at the garden tour goes to direct care, which is to defray the cost of people that would otherwise not be able to attend. And our families have been isolated now for about 12 weeks, I believe. So we are planning on um, returning to the respite care center um, the 23rd. So it's it's sort of a it, it's just a really a revolutionary time for us because everything has changed and and some of the things are are good. But the one thing that we've managed to maintain was this garden tour too. So um, I hope that people will understand that we still will be socially distancing and that we're we're all. Um, abiding by all the rules that we can um, and that they could come out and enjoy the day and at their pace. So if they only felt like they only wanted to do a couple of gardens, but of course the money all does go to a good cause. And we've been an agency in the community for about 25 years, helping individuals with Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease, so. Wonderful. Um, tickets will be available prior to the garden tour at um, Shallows Nursery and Marshfield Area Chamber of Commerce. Um, we also this year, we're gonna add a curbside pickup at Marshfield Area Respite. Mm -hmm. So the week before the garden tour, um, folks can call us at Respite. And then um, like between 4.30 and 5.30 on those weekdays, we will be available um, to for selling tickets. And also we're gonna add that Saturday before the garden tour too. Mm -hmm. So if people, that way they can avoid crowds too and they can already have their tickets mm -hmm. in advance. Okay, and how much are the tickets? Tickets are $10. And again, like um, mm -hmm. Marilyn said, it all goes to our scholarship program um, for folks um, that are in financial need that still need respite care center. So um, we also have um, several businesses that are sponsoring mm -hmm. us. Um, of course, um, United Way, we are a United mm -hmm. Way partner, so we thank Ashley and United Way. Um, Thrivent, ever since this garden mm -hmm. tour has started, um, a Thrivent has donated every single year mm -hmm. um, to this. Um, REMS Funeral Home and Crematory, um, Rudaware Law Firm is a new sponsor this year, um, Bill's Service Center, Shallows Nursery, uh, Citizens National Bank, and WCCN Radio. And uh, we are still collecting sponsors. Um, and uh, more information can also be found on our website www.marshfieldrespite.org. And can they call you somewhere if they have any questions? Yes. Um, our main number is 715-384-8478. Well, thank you, Jill, for visiting with us today. And um, if again, if you have any questions on the upcoming garden tour, please read out, reach out to Sue or Marilyn at um, Marshfield Area Respite Care Center. This is a wonderful cause, um, what they do in our community. Um, just really touches my heart so much, and um, I hope that you can go out and support them.